get started. Um, last time week, I don't know how much video you watched about the last time lecture. Uh, last lecture, we talked about uh, meaning is to explain what is global climate change. And, uh, and we want to relate the global climate change to the increased emission of carbon dioxide, which is a greenhouse gas. And then later on, we talked about how do we determine the geometry of a molecule, because the geometry of a molecule is related to many chemical and, and physical property of the molecule, and also is related to the IR absorption. Okay, and in the end, we talked about why greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and water can absorb IR. And here is what we ended up with, the IR spectrum. Okay, IR spectrum. Basically what happened is the IR radiation does not have enough energy to break a bond or knock electrons off. It can only cause the bond of a molecule to vibrate. And what we mean vibrate meaning if we assume a bond is a spring, the ion radiation will cause the bond to stretch or, or bend. So this picture shows you the types of vibration for carbon dioxide, because carbon dioxide is a linear molecule. And uh, picture A is called symmetrical stretch. Picture B is called asymmetrical stretch. If you look at the spring, it's kind of like stretching. And C and D are called bending vibrations. So basically, you bend a molecule, bend a bond. Now, when the IR basically is a range of radiation from, from a certain wavelength to a certain wavelength, when the IR radiation, okay, when the IR radiation, the wavelength of that part matches the vibrational wav wavelength, or we should say the frequency of that IR matches the vibrational frequency of the bond, then that part of the IR or that wavelength of IR will be absorbed, which is shown in this IR spectrum. As you can see, the IR normally strength is close to 100 strength, like 100 strong. But when a certain part of the IR or a certain wavelength of IR is absorbed, then you will see that the IR strength, well, goes down. So that means this piece, this part of IR around wavelength of 4.3 somewhere is absorbed. And this wavelength of IR should match a type of vibration for a carbon dioxide molecule. In this case, this absorption matches the stretching vibration of carbon dioxide. Now this part, okay, with the longer wavelengths, this part is also absorbed, which matches the bending vibrations of carbon dioxide. And we also explained, because compared to stretching, bending needs lower energy. It's easier to bend a bond than stretch a bond. So that is why the bending vibration wavelengths IR is longer. We know wavelengths are longer what the energy is lower. Okay, so this part of IR corresponds to bending vibrations. This part of IR absorption corresponds to asymmetrical stretching vibrations. Now, out of these four types of vibrations, A vibration, which is called symmetrical vibration, symmetrical stretching vibration, does not cause IR absorption. The reason is, okay, the reason is the vibration is symmetrical, so the charge changes in charge distribution during the vibration canceled each other during IR absorptions. So this vibration does not cause IR absorption. So this is called the IR spectrum of carbon dioxide. Okay, carbon dioxide. Is this chapter three? Yes, okay. chapter three. Now, next picture, next picture shows you the IR absorption or IR spectrum of water vapor. Like we mentioned earlier in this chapter, water vapor and carbon dioxide are the most two important greenhouse gases. So water play a very important role in absorbing IR radiations from the sun and also from the earth. As you can see here, this is the 
different types of vibration for water. This is the bending vibration. This is symmetrical, asymmetrical stretch. This is symmetrical stretch. Now, unlike water, okay, uh, I'm sorry, unlike carbon dioxide, water molecule is considered a asymmetrical geometry. Okay, we're going to talk about later chapters. Carbon dioxide is linear, so the geometry of the molecule is, sorry, the geometry of the molecule is symmetrical. So if you stretch like this, we call this stretch what? Symmetrical stretch, which does not cause IR absorption. However, water molecule, on the other hand, is a asymmetrical geometry. So even you stretch like this, this stretch is still considered symmetrical stretch, but because the geometry is asymmetrical, so all these vibrations will cause IR absorption. Okay, all these vibrations will cause IR absorption. You can see that a molecule of three or more atoms, just like water and carbon dioxide, can absorb IR and uh, act as greenhouse gases. Water is the, by far the most important gas in maintaining the earth temperature, followed by carbon dioxide. So a quick question for you. Okay, something you can even study because you're not here uh, last time. Is if you look at the IR spectrum, which, okay, which absorption, okay, if you group these two absorptions into two groups, which group do you think corresponds to bending? Which group do you think corresponds to stretching vibration? To, what? to bending and versus stretching. Okay, which wavelengths do you predict represents bending vibration? And which represents stretching vibration? Stretching, probably. The, the wavelengths is what? Around? Like 2.6 to like 5 is 2. like 2.6 to 5. Those are what? Stretching vibrations. Stretching. And these are what? Bending, bending vibrations. vibrations. Very good. Yes, the reason is the same. Usually, bending vibrations takes less energy. It's easier to bend a bond. So the energy for bending vibrations will be lower, which corresponds to what? Longer wavelengths. Okay, longer wavelengths. Again, all triatomic molecules, okay, all triatomic molecules, just like carbon dioxide and water, they will absorb IR. But if you consider the molecules in our gas, those can act as greenhouse gases are only those foods. Water, carbon dioxide, ozone, or methane even. So that means what? The main component, okay, the main component of the air, such as nitrogen and oxygen, these gases are diatomic molecules. Because they're diatomic molecules, again, this is very similar to the carbon dioxide issue. Because they're diatomic, the geometry of the molecule is considered what? Symmetrical. So when they stretch, no matter the stretch like this or stretch like that, the vibration is always what? Symmetrical. And because of that, the overall charge distribution of the molecules will not change during bond vibrations. And because the charge will not change, these molecules don't absorb Okay, don't absorb IR means what? These diatomic molecules, even though they are the main component of the air, they're not greenhouse gases. They will not be responsible for what? Keeping us warm. Does it make sense? Yes. Okay, that's all for the first part of chapter three. Okay, again, we talked about global climate change, and we try to relate the change to what? To the increasing amount of the greenhouse gas carbon dioxide because water vapor you normally don't change dramatically or won't be affected by natural or human activity, mostly human activities. But carbon dioxide concentration is significantly affected by human activities. And we also explain later why carbon dioxide and water molecules like these can absorb IR and we show spectrums of these. Good? Okay, next, second half of the chapter, I think is the most important part of chapter three and four is we're gonna study how do we quantify chemistry 
course, this is this chapter we're talking about carbon, so we talk about quantify carbon. But we're talking about here is how do we quantify chemistry? How do we do calculations in chemistry? How do we quantify chemicals or substances in chemistry? Okay, now in order to quantify something, we need what? We need numbers. Okay, we need numbers. This is the periodic table. Okay, periodic table. We know in a periodic type table, the elements are arranged by the order of what? We call these numbers what? The atomic number. Atomic number. These numbers are what? Increasing. Number so of protons. protons. They're increasing from 1 all the way to what? 18. They're a whole number because they're a number of what? Protons. Now, these numbers has nothing to do with calculations because they're, again, the number of what? Protons. Okay, protons. They tell us how many electrons they have. Okay, but again, has nothing to do with chemical calculations. What's important? Okay, what is important are these numbers. Okay, normally in a square of periodic table, there are two numbers. One is what? One is mass. mass. One is the atomic, another one is what? Mass number. Cut mass number. What is a mass number? Mass number is the mass of the element. Of that element. Now you may wonder. We know when we studied early chapters, element, the basic unit is what? What is the basic unit for elements? The atoms. The atoms, right? And we know elements are built by our component. Our, our basic units are different atoms. For example, oxygen, we have oxygen atoms, right? And we know oxygen atoms, they exist in the same number of protons, but their neutron number could be what? Could be different. And we call those what? Remember, we call those what? Think about for atoms with the same proton number, but different neutron number. Isotopes. Isotopes, very good, right? So that means if even you're talking about the same element, you have different atoms, right? Some atoms is heavier, some atoms is what? Is lighter, because of what? Because they're an isotope, their neutron numbers are different. So, how do we know the mass of the element? Since the mass of the atoms are actually different, some are heavier, some are lighter. That's why we do an average. That is why these numbers, we call the atomic mass number, is actually a calculated what? Average mass of the isotopes. A calculated average mass of the isotopes. Okay, for example, carbon. Okay, you can see carbon is six, and the atomic mass number is 12.01. You may wonder, where did the 12.01 come from? We know carbon exists as carbon 12, carbon 13, and carbon 14, right? But where does the carbon 12.01 come from? Now, here comes the um, cause that we just said. Carbon exists in what? Different isotopes. But those isotopes exist in different percentages we call abundance. In this case for carbon, carbon 12, the natural abundance is close to 99%. That means what? Most of the carbon, if you have a bunch of carbon, most of carbon will be what? Carbon 12. Is that right? Yes. And some carbon, 1.1% carbon will be what? Carbon. carbon 13 and very tiny amount is what? Carbon. carbon 14. So even though you have three carbons, 12, 13, 14, but they exist in different percentages. So each one of those three has what? Different contributions to the overall mass. How do we know their contribution? Very simple. You use the mass number multiply by the percentage. Okay, mass number multiplied by 98.9%. Again, percentage is what? Per 100. You get this. Use 13 multiplied by this percentage, you get what? You get that. And use 14 multiplied by this percentage, you get this. And then you add them all together. This final answer, you counted all their contributions. This final answer, 12.01 is what is the atomic weight for carbon. For carbon what? For carbon element. Because this is again and what? An average. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Why we an average? Because we consider what? 
all three isotopes and also all three percentage of each one, each isotopes. Does it make sense? Yes. Okay, again, this atomic mass is an average by considering the isotopes and their what? Their natural abundance. Okay, natural abundance. And you can see here, most elements exist in different isotopes, and they come in different percentages, except this one, beryllium, because it only, there's only one isotope. But most of them come in different what? Different isotopes, and they have different what? Percentages. Different percentage means what? Different isotopes will have different contributions. If the percentage is high, means this isotope will, will contribute what? Contribute more. If this one contributes more, you can actually imagine, for example, lithium. Lithium comes with lithium-6 and lithium-7. But lithium-7 is close to 90%. What, what can you tell about the average? The because average will be close to what? Close to 7. 7, because what? This guy contributes what? More. And that's why lithium, if you look at the periodic table, if you look at the periodic table, lithium, the atomic mass is what? Close to 7, right? 6.9. Why? Because lithium-7 is almost what? 92. Very, very good. Okay? Now, like we said earlier, if I give you some info about different isotopes and their percentage, how do we calculate the average? Okay, how do we calculate? This is the standard exercise, and you're going to see that maybe in your quiz and test, and also there's a lab, actually, on this topic. You're going to do the same math in your lab as well. Okay, how do we calculate the average? If we know the isotopes and if we know their natural abundance, again, we do what? We use the mass. mass of that isotope multiplied by their percentage. We get their what? Contribution. Is that right? And then we use another mass multiplied by their percentage. We get another contribution. Then we add those both contributions together. We get what? We get the average. Okay, this is how we calculate the average mass of what? Of chlorine. Okay, of chlorine. Okay, this is another method. Okay, this is another method showing why it is actually an average. I don't want to go into too detail, but if you like, you can read another method. Uh, basically, we assume you have 100 atoms. Okay, 100 atoms, then 75%, then for example, is what? 75 real atoms, because we assume total is 100. And the same. 24% means what? I have 24.23 atoms. So I calculate the total mass divided by the total number 100. I get the same idea. Okay, so there's two ways of understanding this. This one is you assume you have 100 of them, and you actually do the average. Okay. The previous one is what? Previous one is simply multiply that to get the contribution. Mm -hmm. But they're both the same idea, is you consider both the mass number and what? The percentage. Okay, percentage. This method, again, is just helping you better understand why it's called an average. If you assume there's 100, you can see that the total mass divided by the total number, it's an average, right? This is why what average means. Again, yes. both methods, whichever way you find easier. Okay, again, you will use these methods both in your practice quizzes and also the lab. You will work on this. The lab is called atoms and, and, and atomic mass. Okay. This is another okay, another example okay, in the answer keys here. Uh, please feel free to, to to work on these and even cover the solution as and work on these to calculate the atomic mass. Okay, calculate atomic mass. Okay, here is a very quick check. Okay, something easy, but something we can use to review what we learned today and what we learned in even previous chapters. Okay, nitrogen. Okay, nitrogen has two naturally occurring isotopes, nitrogen-14 and nitrogen-15. So first question, use the periodic table to find the atomic number and atomic mass for nitrogen. Do you have a periodic table, table with you? You can pull it out because we're going to use that a lot. Use the periodic table to find the atomic number and atomic mass of nitrogen. Nitrogen. Yes. Okay. Atomic number seven. 
the mass okay. is 14.007. Okay, 14.007. We can just use 14. Okay, good. Number B. How many, what is the number of proton, neutron, and electron for N14? 777. 777. Perfect. Okay, what is the same question but for N15? Probably 7 protons, 7 electrons, and 8 neutrons. 8 neutrons, because this one mass number is one more means what? Neutron is mm -hmm. one more. Everything else should be safe. Okay, last question, the one we actually mentioned earlier already. Given the atomic mass of nitrogen, which is what? 14, right? Which isotope has bigger percentage? Nitrogen 14. Nitrogen 14, because what? No, average is close to 14. You can see that this is the real percentage. Mm -hmm. And nitrogen 14 is close to what? Almost cl close to 100% already. Okay, nitrogen 15 is less than 1%. Again, that gives you an average. Not simply, when, when we talk about average, we simply do what? We simply do add together divided by 2. We call that an average. But in this case, we cannot average by dividing by 2. The reason is what? They don't exist in what? In equal amount. Is that right? If you, if you do an average weight for two persons, that's simple because one and one person were equal in equal amount. But if you... Consider these two, you have a lot more 14 than 15. You cannot simply what? Add 14, 15 together by divide by two. Right? So that's one topic. We know what, okay, we know what these numbers are first. These are again what? The atomic mass for these what? Elements now. We're not talking about single atom because they're what? They're average. Does it make sense? They has nothing to do with the single atom because they're averaged out by considering what? The mass of the atoms plus their what? Percentage. Is that right? Okay. First, we know what the numbers are. Next, let's take a look how do we use these numbers. Okay. What makes this number useful? Okay. Next. In chemistry, okay, in chemistry, the atoms are tiny. So their mass is extremely small. So we have to create a way to relate the quantity of a substance with the mass number but in grams. Remember, when we have work on chemicals, we can only measure them what? On the balance. And the most commonly used balance unit for, for, what? for measuring mass is either what? Grams or kilograms. Mostly grams in the lab scale. So we have to create a way so that we can relate to the quantity of a substance to what? To the mass of something. Here is that relation, that most important intermediate guy that can relate the quantity to the mass. We call that mole, okay, M-O-L-E, okay, M-O-L. What is a mole? One mole, okay, one mole is this much number of something. That's by definition. Okay, what is one mole? Okay, one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. What does that mean? It means a mole is a what? Is a number. Okay, count, number. That means what? Quantity. Is that right? Quantify means what? You need to count numbers. So one mole of something is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of something. And we call this number Avogadro's number. Okay, Avogadro's number. Now where does the number come from? Where does the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd come from? It is the number of carbon atoms in exactly 12 grams of carbon to what is carbon 12? The isotope with six electrons and six protons. I'm sorry, six protons and six neutrons. If you have 12 grams of it, if you have 12 grams of this guy, if you count the atoms, you will find the number of atoms is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. That is where this number came from. And we define this number one mole. Again, a mole is what? Is a number. Okay, to better understand, okay, to better understand one mole, you can use a very commonly used number in, in, in everyday life, 
a dozen. What is a dozen? Twelve. So when, when talking about people refer to you, hey, do you know what is a dozen? Twelve. But a dozen and twelve means the same thing means what? A dozen is a what? It's a number because twelve you're doing what? Count, right? A dozen of eggs means what? Twelve eggs. So you're doing counting. The same. A mole is what? Six point of tract. It's just a bigger dozen. But again, remember, mole, we're talking about number. An, a mole of computer, that means 6.02 times 23 of a computer. Okay, we never specified what. Okay, we could, but mole itself, again, is a what? Is a number. Okay, it came from what? Came from 12 grams of exact 12 grams of pure carbon 12 isotope. Okay, isotope. Okay, then later on you will see how why one mole is so useful. Now, because one mole of something equals to 12.02 times 10 to the 23rd of something, we can create these two mathematical terms. One mole over 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Or 6.02 times 10 to the 3rd over one mole. We call these two terms conversion factors. Okay, conversion factors. Keep that those in mind. We will use them. In, in the next 10 20 minutes of class okay why we can create these two because they're what equivalent okay one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 10 third or 6.02 times is what is one mole and here of course we use atoms you can change the atoms to molecules you can change the atoms to computers footballs whatever you want as long as you make them consistent make sense okay now next the most important part because the one mole, okay, this is one mole, right? Came from what? 12 grams of what? Carbon 12. Because of this relation, okay, because of this relation, we have this. One mole of atoms of any element has a mass in grams equal to the atomic mass of that element. We call that mass molar mass. The unit is grams per mole. Okay, I'll read again. One mole of atoms of any element has a mass in grams. So one mole of the atoms, the mass will be in grams. How many grams? Equal to what? The atomic mass of what? Of the element. For example, carbon. What is the atomic mass? 12.01, right? We see that earlier. Mm -hmm. So that means what? This guy has no unit yet. But that means what? One mole of carbon will be what? 12.01 grams. Because what? See, that has a mass in what? In equal grams. Okay, equal to the atomic. Okay, atomic mass, I'm sorry. Nitrogen, we said earlier, nitrogen mass is what? 14.07, 14.01. Then what? One mole of nitrogen will be what? 14.01 grams. Anything. That's how the numbers in the periodic table is now what? Useful because we now know one mole of any element, how much gram there what is. Again, the unit should be what? Grams per what? Per mole. Because one mole is what? How many grams? Okay, how can we do that? Take a look. 12C12 is what? 12 grams is what? C12, right? Mm -hmm. Is what? Is one mole. So that means what? One mole of C12 is how many grams? 12 grams. We define it. That is where we can what? Use it on the hand. Does it make sense? Yes. Good. Here. Okay, here. It's more about the moles, like we said. Like 12 is a dozen, 20 is a score, 100 is a century, a mole is what? 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, even for different object, even they have the same number, they have what? Different mass, just like carbon. One mole is what? 12 grams. Nitrogen, one mole will be what? Will be 14 grams. Because what? They're different objects. Mm -hmm. Even though they're both six balls, you can see that apparently, which is heavier? Maybe tennis ball is heavier than golf balls because 
they're bigger, they're maybe heavier materials, right? And here this picture shows you the one mole of some elements. You can see this is one mole. They're all one moles. Mercury, silicon, palladium, mag uh, magnesium, sulfur, copper, you can see they're different. Right, one mole of something is more than, looks more than something else, but they're all what? One mole. But what's different between these guys? The mass is different. How do we know the mass? We find what? How do we know the mass of each? If they're all one mole, how do we know the mass of each? Periodic table. Periodic table. Look what? The atomic number. The atomic. For example, sulfur atomic number is what? I'm sorry, atomic mass. Sulfur atomic mass is what? 32. 32. 32. That means what? Here is 32 grams of sulfur. Okay. Copper atomic mass is what? 63.5? Yes. So that means this is what? 63.5 grams. See? They all have one mole. Means what? They have the same number of what? Atoms. Because one mole is how many? 6.02 times 10 to the 20. But even though the number of the atoms are the same, the mass are what? Different. Okay, the mass is different. All right? Next. Next. For a molecule, okay, for a molecule, if we add all the atomic mass together in a molecule, we can get a mass of the molecule too. We call the mass the formula mass. For example, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, this molecule contains what? Contains one carbon and what? Two oxygen. This is by the formula. Okay, one carbon in this formula, two oxygen in this formula. So if we add all these atomic masses together, carbon is 12, oxygen is 16, two of the oxygen, add them all together. This multiplied by two means what? Two oxygen. The total 44 is the mass of what? Mass of CO2. We call this mass the formula mass, Fm. Formula mass is from what? From adding all the atomic masses together in what? In the formula. Does this make sense? Same. For example, this is the CFC, C chlorine 3F. We add the mass of carbon, 3 chlorine, and 1 fluorine. Carbon, 3 chlorine, and 1 fluorine. We get the mass of 137.5. We call this what? The formula mass of the CFC. Good so far? Now, after we know the formula mass, we can apply the same idea we just did on atoms. That is the molar mass of a m compound numerically equal to the what? The formula mass. What is molar mass? What is molar mass? It's molar the, mass is mass per what? Mole. Per mole. Okay, mass per mole. Means what? CO2. One mole will be what? 44 grams. Why? Because numerically equal to what? To the formula mass. That means number, they're the same. What is different? The units are different. Formula mass, there's no unit. Or we can use AMU to be more accurate. But no unit. We don't show it in units. But molar mass will be what? Grams per what? Per mole. Means what? One mole is 44 grams. Numerically, they're equal, but units are different. Okay, units are different. The same, this guy, formula mass is 137.5, so their molar mass is what? 137.5 grams per what? Per mole. Does that make sense? Okay, again, very important, those two. Okay, for atoms, okay, for atoms, the atomic mass and the molar mass are what? Numerically equal. Right? Atomic mass carbon is 12.01. Then molar mass is what? 12.01 grams. Here, for molecules, okay, for molecules, the formula mass and the molar mass are what? Numerically equal. But formula mass has no unit. Molar mass unit is what? Grams per mole. Okay, grams. 
Okay, quickly. Okay, quickly. Can you calculate the molar mass of these three greenhouse gases? Okay, do a quick calculation. What are they? Molar mass. Ozone is 48. 48. What is the unit? Grams per Grams per. Don't forget that unit. If you don't have a unit, that's not molar mass. Molar mass is always what? Grams per mole. So ozone is 48. Very good. Dinitrogen monoxide is, or nitrous oxide. 44.02 grams, per, grams mole. per mole. Okay, always remember the unit grams per mole. Very good. How about Freon 11? Thirty-seven point three six grams per mole. One point eight seven point. One thirty-seven point three six grams per mole. Per mole. Very good. Okay. Again, most importantly is what yeah. is unit. All right. Now let me ask you. So far, what units or what quantity terms we have learned so far? We know what. Mole, right? Mole is what? Number. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And we also know what? Mole. And now we also relate mole to what? To grams. So if you think about it, one mole is what? 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So that means what? Mole is related to what? To real number, right? One mole is how many? 6.02. Two mole, then one be what? Two times 6.02 times. So we know mole is related to number. And we also, here, what's the unit for molar mass? Grams per what? Per mole. That means what? Mole is also related to what? Two grams. Is that right? For carbon dioxide, for example, one mole is how many grams? 44 grams. For this guy, one mole is how many grams? 137.5 grams. So we also we know one mole is related to what? Two grams then well. Is that right? If you have as if I ask you how many how many grams is two mole? Two mole is what? 88 grams. Is that right? Because one mole is 44, then two mole is what? 88. So that means mole is related to both what? The number and what? And grams. Do you see why we have we invented this game? You may have well, why what the heck? Why were you guys talking about mole? Now you see how amazing this unit is. Numbers are small, we can never count. Is that right? That's why we need something to relate, something we can count, we can measure. Grams we can measure because we have, we have scales, we have values. But we need something to relate, something we can measure to what? To the number, because we know the basic units for, for, for chemistry is what? Atoms and molecules, they're what? They're counted by numbers, right? So we have to use what? Mole. Okay, mole. So because these three guys are related with moles in the middle, so we can actually convert between these two or convert between these two or convert even between these two. And we call these chemical calculations or mole calculations. Okay, so next few, last part of the chapter, we're gonna work together. Okay, we're gonna work together. How do we do chemical, chemical calculations? Okay, this will bring out the terms we, we mentioned before. Okay, cut the conversion factors. So first example, okay, first thing. This is gonna be the method you use throughout the semester. Okay, hopefully you can use and be very well familiar with how to use this method in any types of chemical calculations. Okay, so first, if you have 36 grams of carbon, 
Okay, we know carbon is what? Is 12 grams what? Per mole. How do we know that? This is what? From the periodic table. Is that right? Carbon is 12, so the molar mass is what? 12 grams per mole. So we know that. Again, some, most time you won't even see this. This one is the question, first question I put in here. They ask you, how many moles in that? Okay, how many moles are in that? So that means this question ask, gives you grams and ask you what? Moles. Grams and moles are actually directly what? Related. By what? By the molar mass. What is the molar mass? 12.01 per mole. Is that right? So that means from the molar mass, I can create these two terms. One mole, how many grams? 12.01. Or 12.01 over what? One mole. One mole. Okay, I, have, I can always create two from the molar mass. Then this is how we do it. I use the given unit, grams, because this is what I'm given, right? 36.0 grams carbon. I always put this one given first. Multiply one of these two. That's why I created these two. The one I chose, okay, again, one of these two means I need to choose one. The one I chose will have the given unit at the bottom. You see, the given unit is what? Grams. So which one has grams at the bottom? 12 grams, one mole at the bottom. So I multiply this guy. Why I put this, choose the given unit at the bottom? Because grams and grams will be what? Cancel. You see that? If a bottom means what? Divide, right? So grams divide grams is what? One. It means canceled. That's why we put the grams at the bottom. So grams and grams cancel. What units are left? Mole is left. We're asking what? Moles. Is that right? So we achieved what we wanted. So use the given unit, multiply a conversion factor. Again, the conversion factor is from what? From molar mass. Put the given unit at the bottom. So you choose one with the given unit and what? And the bottom. 12 grams, one more. Grams and grams cancel. You see that? Grams and grams cancel. So all you need is use 36 divided by 12. Again, you cannot take, you don't cancel number yet. You only cancel what? Units. Grams of carbon, grams of carbon. Is that what we're talking about? Carbon. Mm -hmm. So 36 divided by 12, this unit is not canceled. So we save that unit what? More. Then you use your calculator, 36 divided by 12, which is three, how many? Mole. Why mole? Because gram is gone. You only have what? Mole left. Does this make sense? Start with the given unit, always. Then multiply by something. That's something you always know. Because it's a relation. Okay? The bottom. Okay, bottom. There's another question here about how many carbons do you have? I mean, how many carbon atoms do we have? If I ask this question, how many carbon atoms means what? You need to tell me how many count carbon atoms. One, two, three, four, five, a million, three million. So that means I need to convert what? The mole further to what? To number. Okay, to number. Now, if you remember, if you remember, I said earlier, a mole is what? 6.02 times 10 to the what? 23rd. So that means I can create these two. You see that? One mole is what? 6.0 times 10 to the 23rd. Or 6.02 times 10 to the over what? Over a mole. So these two are the one I have. Then take a look. From the first step, okay, from the first step, I got three mole already. Okay, three more already. So I start with the three mole. Then again, this is my given now, right? Three mole is I know. Mm -hmm. Multiply by a conversion factor. This time the given is what? Mole. So I need to put the what? Mole and the bottom. 
One mole is how many? 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So now you can see that moles of carbon and moles of our carbon what? Canceled. All I need is in my calculator do this 3 times 0, 0 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. I get 1.8. 1 times 10 to the 24th. So you did, you did 6.02 to the 10 to the 23rd divided by 3? Multiplied by 3. Multiplied. 3 is on top. Okay. Good. 3 is on top. If it's the bottom, you divide. If it is on top, okay. you multiply and multiply. So 3 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So you're actually getting 18 point something times 10 to the 23rd. Then you move the decimal to the left by one more. Okay. They increase the exponent. 24. Does it make sense? Yes. You did the scientific notation, right? Remember? Yes. 3 times 6 is 18 something. So because the scientific notation doesn't want 18. At one point, it needs the one digit. Mm -hmm. So you move the decimal to the left. Then you increase the exponent by what? By one. Does it make sense? Yes. See that here, the same. 36 times 1 divided by what? By 32. Anything in the bottom, you divide. Top, you multiply. They only thing we're canceling here is what? The unit, never the number. Number you, you do in your what? Calculator. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Okay, take a look. Okay, more. Okay, more. Before I ask you uh, to try something yourself. Okay, one more practice. If you have 36 grams of carbon dioxide, okay, 36 grams of carbon dioxide, how many moles are in there? The same question. We're given what? Grams. We ask what? Moles. The only thing that relates grams and moles is again, molar mass. For carbon dioxide, what is the molar mass? 44, we did already. So 44 means what? 44 grams over what? One mole. Or one mole over what? 44 grams. You, you put this aside. You know I, I got these two. Then, again, your given is what? 36 grams. Put it down. Multiply something. Now you choose which one? This one. Why? Because this one, the grams is where? On the bottom. At the bottom. So grams of CO2, grams of CO2 can what? Can cancel. So all we left, all we have left is what? 36 divided by 44 unit is what? Mole. Why only mole? Because grams of CO2 and grams of CO2 what? Canceled. All I have is what? The mole of CO2, of course. Okay, this one mole means one mole of CO2. Right? And again, 36 divided by 44 is in your what? Calculator. So the answer is this many moles. Does it make sense? Yes. Okay, again, always the same method. You use something, multiply something to cancel some unit you don't want, then what? Get the unit you want. Next. Okay, next, I will I will do it with you. Okay, do it with you and, and explain to you. Again, we can use the same uh, method. Uh, not use the answer key method. We can use the same method we talked about earlier. But uh, I'll, I'll do it together with you. Okay. First question. Okay, basically, the question is the most important one is the first, first question. Ask you to calculate the average mass of nitrogen atom but in grams okay, the average mass of a nitrogen atoms but in grams we know what is the first thing we ask you for nitrogen atom nitrogen atom one nitrogen atom if we're asking the mass of one nitrogen atom what do you first think about 14 14 right but that 14, okay, that 14, what is the unit? There's no unit. No unit. So it's not what? Not in grams. But the question asks you what? In grams. So you're right. 
the mass of a nitrogen is 14, but unfortunately not in grams. Is that right? We have to find somewhere what? In grams. Where do we know in grams? We know one mole of nitrogen is what? 14.01 grams. Is that right? But if we talk about 14.01 grams, we're not talking about one nitrogen. We're talking about how many nitrogen? One mole. Is that right? How many is one mole? 6.02 times to 10 to the third. So they use the total mass divided by the total number. They get what? The single one. Does it make sense? Or let me show you the one method we did in class. Okay. To be safer. Use the method we did in class. Again, we start with here, 14 grams per what? Per one mole. Is that right? This is for nitrogen. Okay, why we put the grams? Because I the question asked me for grams. Then I need to multiply something. Okay, multiply something. They are at, not asking the, the mass of one mole nitrogen. They're asking what? The mass of what? One single nitrogen. So I need this mole to be what? To be gone. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So I multiply this. One mole over 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Take a look while we do that. If I multiply, this is legit, right? Because one mole is what? 6.02 times 10 to the 3rd. So this is the legit conversion factor. The reason I do that is because if I multiply this, one mole is where? On top. One mole is where? On bottom. So after that, the mole is what? Is gone. So I'm basically using the grams divided by what? How many carbon, how many nitrogen atoms? So this is what? All nitrogen atoms. Okay, this many nitrogen atoms. So then you I use 14 divided by this, okay, 14 divided by this, this is the answer I just copied. We can do it on calculator, of course, but times 10 to the minus 23rd unit grams per what? Per what? Per nitrogen. Is that right? Is that what we want? They're asking, they're asking the mass of what? One, one nitrogen, this is what? Per nitrogen. You see that? The, the, you, the concept of calculation is the same. We want to cancel the unit we don't want, end up with what? The unit we want. This is grams per what? Per one nitrogen. Okay, per one nitrogen. Good? You can see how small that number is. Okay, this is what we see 14 there, but 14 is not, is not real what? It's not real grams. It's an atomic relative number. But this is 14. No unit. Okay, I'll leave these two to do to, to, to do it by yourself. But I'll give you some guide, and and ask you a quest, this question after that. I give you the guide. First, number two. They ask you calculate the mass in grams of five trillion nitrogen atoms. Do you think that's easy? Yes. How do we do it? You multiply or. Put it, put five trillion in scientific notation, and then just and then multiply it by this guy. Two. Because one is this many. If you ask how five trillion, but I just multiply what mm -hmm. by five trillion. And the same for C. Calculate the mass in grams of this is more than trillion, right? Because it's ten to the fifteenth of nitrogen atoms. We do the same thing, right? Use the mass of a single one multiplied by what by the number. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can do this. The quick, quick question for you though. For these. Examples, especially B and C. Do you think the value will be large or small? B and C. We know this is a small number already. For B and C, do you think the value will be large or small? Or one large, one small? Or both large, both small? What do you think? I think B would be pretty small still. Yes, B is very small. What is a trillion? Billion is 10 to the 9th. Yes. So trillion is 10 to the 12th. 
Still small. Mm -hmm. So how about C? C would probably yeah, This is 10 to the ninth. This C would still be pretty small because you're taking away 23 from 15. So I see still what you be, mean. Still be when we multiply the exponent, when we multiply scientific notation, what, what, what do we do about the exponent? Well, we just add, we add right? them, right? Minus 23, yeah, even you add 15 is how many? That's still... Minus 8, is that right? <laughs> Minus 8 is still what? 0 0.7 zeros. That means what? Even you got this many atoms, it's still what? You can think about why we do moles now. Yeah, because atoms are so small. Even 6.02 of those times 10 to the 23rd of those is only how many grams? 20 grams. That's why these, they're not one mole yet. They're far away from one mole yet. That's why they're what? Smaller. You see that now? Why we created the concept of that weird mole. Okay, that's that. All right? Good? Do well? Okay. It said, in the beginning, you will not be quite used to this, but after f some practice, we're not doing a lot of complicated calculation for, 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 this, for this class purpose. So, but at least you get an idea about how chemistry can, this is the same way, no matter if you're really a chemistry major, you do the same thing. You use the known unit, multiply something, what, conversion factor. Then cancel the known unit to get the what? To get the unit you want. Right. Next, another topic is in a molecule or in a formula, we can, based on the formula, calculate the ratio or percent of any element. Okay, this one, I use this simple example to show you what is the ratio, what is the mass ratio or mass percent in a formula. For example, in CO2, okay, in CO2, if I ask you how do we calculate the mass ratio and mass percent of carbon in CO2, we know CO2 is made by what? One carbon and what? Two oxygen. The total mass of CO2 again is what? 44. But out of these 44, how many carbon? One carbon, which is what? 12. 12. 12. You can say 12 grams, then this one has to be grams as well. Mm -hmm. Again, if we're talking from formula mass, then this is what? 44, no unit. Then this has to be what? Atomic mass, also what? No, no unit. unit. But out of 44, whatever units you're using, 12 is what? It's carbon. Why? Because it's determined by the, by the formula. Okay, CO2 is one carbon, two oxygen. So if I use 12 divided by the total 44, this number we call the mass what ratio. If you use a calculator to divide and get a percentage in, 27%, then we call this what mass percentage. They're the same thing. The only difference is this is in fraction. This is what in what in percentage. Make sense? Okay. Okay. This is a lot easier. How do we use that? Okay, why that is useful? Okay, why that is useful? Okay, this is one of the calculations demonstrating why that is useful. With the knowledge of the mass percent or mass ratio, of mass percent, they ask you to calculate if you burn third, I mean, sorry, three point three gigatons, okay, GT gigatons of carbon. Okay, if you burn this much of carbon, how much CO2 will be released, will be produced? If we know the ratio, this problem can be easily solved by using the method we discussed before. Take a look. We know mass of CO2 and 2 and C, the ratio is what? 44 and what? 12. Like we said, if these two numbers, if you choose no unit, then both what? No unit. But you can change that unit to what? 
to anything. As long as the units are what? Consistent. For example, I can change to 44 what? Grams to what? 12 grams. Can I say 44 kilograms to 40, 12 kilograms? Yes. Because they're what? The ratio, they're same. Kilograms, kilograms, cancel. Grams, grams, cancel. Mm -hmm. You still end up with no unit. So you can put a unit, whatever unit you want. So that means what? I can put 44 gigatons and 12 what? Gigatons. Remember, gigaton, gigaton still cancel. You still get 44 and 12. So here I use the given one, third of three. 3.3 gigaton of what? Carbon. This is what we burn, right? Mm -hmm. Multiply 44 gigaton over 12 gigaton. Why I multiply this guy? Because the gigaton carbon is at what? The bottom. Do you see that? Why would I multiply this guy? Because that's what they're related to. If they're related to, I can create this guy. Why would I put the carbon at the bottom? Because I'm given what? Gigaton of carbon. I want to cancel the gigaton of carbon to get what? How much CO2 I got. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So I multiply 44 gigaton of carbon dioxide over 12 gigaton of carbon. Gigaton carbon, gigatons of carbon cancel. All I have in my calculator is what? Can you tell me how do we calculate? 3.3 times, times 44. 44. And then what? Divide by, by 12.0. Is that 12? 12.089. Okay, 12.0. You can just put 12. And 12 what? What is the unit? Gigaton of what? CO2. Because gigaton carbon cancel. Mm -hmm. You see that? So with the ratio, okay, with the ratio, we can also do chemical calculations. All right? Next. Okay, next. A little further. They ask you, okay, after you get 12 gigatons of carbon dioxide, okay, and they ask you, how many molecules of carbon dioxide are in 12 gigatons? Wow, that's just crazy. How many molecules are in 12 gigatons? How do we solve that? Remember, if I want to know the molecule, if I want to count, what, what unit do you think? If I want to count number, what is related to number? Mm -hmm. Mole. Is that right? Yeah. One mole is how many? 12.02 times what? 10 to the 23rd. I'm sorry, 6.02 times what? Mm -hmm. 10, 10 to the 23rd. So if I ask a number, they ask you how many molecules. Again, these are what they're asking how many counts. Then you need to think about what? Mole. If I know mole, I know what? Number. Because one mole is what? 6.02. Is that right? But knowing mole is not enough. Here, I'm not, I don't know mole yet. So I need to know mole, but I'm not given mole yet. But mole is related to which mass? Mole is related to which mass? Grams. Is that right? We know carbon dioxide is what? 44 what? Grams, grams per mole. mole. So we know if I know grams, I know what? I know mole. If I know mole, I know what? Number. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So my first job now is to convert 12 gigaton to what? To grams. Because I want grams so bad. So how do we know I can convert? The question gives you already. What is one gigaton? One times 10 to the what? 15 grams. So take a look at the first step, what I did. 12 gigaton, again this is from previous page, times 1.15 grams over what? One gigaton. Why? Because they're, they're equal. Is that right? Yes. Why I put a gigaton on the bottom? Because that was what? That's what we get. Cancel gigaton. That's the given. So after this, it's times 12, of course, divided by 1. I get now what? Grams Two. times 10 to the 16 grams. Next, take a look what I did. I use this many grams times what? One mole what? 44 grams. Where does that come from? 
Motor mass. Why I put grams in the bottom? Because I want what? Cancel grams to get what? To get moles. Is that right? Then, finally, I got moles. I times 6.02 times 10 to the 20 divided by 1 mole. Because 1 mole is what? 6.02 times 10 to the 20. Why I put more in the bottom? Because I can cancel what? Moles. And then what? I get number. Okay. You see that? Mm -hmm. okay, this is how chemical calculation works. Now, let me show you on board. How can I put these all three or four steps even together? Okay, together. Let me show you how amazing the, the canceling factor is. We started here, right? We started here. Three point three. Sorry, that'd be nicer. Uh, okay. Three point three gigaton of what? Carbon. Is that right? times 12 gigaton capital G gigaton of carbon over what 44 gigaton of what CO2 is that right mm -hmm. keep going you can you can even tell in your mind gigaton carbon gigaton carbon cancel I get what gigaton what CO2 Keep going. One gigaton CO2. One gigaton is how many? One gigaton is one times 10 to the 15 what? Grams of what? CO2. Is that right? Keep going. 44 grams of CO2 is what? One mole of what? CO2. CO2. Keep going. One mole of CO2 is what? 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of what? CO2. Done. Let me show you how do we cancel them. Use a red color. Take a look at the units. Gigaton carbon. Oops. Gigaton carbon. Gigaton, don't touch the numbers. You only cancel what? Mm -hmm. Units, right? Don't touch numbers. Gigaton carbon, gigaton number what? Canceled. Gigaton CO2, gigaton CO2 what? Canceled. Grams of CO2, grams of CO2 what? Canceled. Mole of CO2, moles of CO2 canceled. You see that? All gone. All I have left is what? How many CO2s we're talking about? Is that right? The number of molecules. This is exactly what they're asking. What? How many molecules are one? So again, if I do the math, mass, what do I do? I use 3.3 .3 times 44 times 1 point times 10 times 10 to the 15th times 1 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. This is everything on top. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Divide by what? By 12 times 1 times what? 44. Mm -hmm. This is everything on what? The bottom. Again, put a parenthesis on both in your calculator. Then again, unit is what? How many number of what? CO2. Does it make sense? Is that nice? I mean, mm -hmm. if you can do it one single step, you don't have to even you don't have to even worry about multiple steps if you if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? Um, so I remember this from high school. Oh, you did this in high school? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah, again, this is called conversion factors. Okay, conversion factors. This, by this, we can convert any unit. You can see most of the conversion factor, you know it already. Mm -hmm. This one we don't. We never, I don't even know what gigaton is, but the question will tell you. Okay, even the question, you can Google it. Okay, what, what is gigaton? What gigaton is 15 grams? And then you just copy it down to 15 grams. The only thing you need to care is put this on where? On the bottom. Because you want to cancel gigaton, get what? Get grants. Good? Okay, yeah. next. Okay, next. These are, I think these two are very similar. Okay, ask you to do the same thing on sulfur. I think I can leave it up to you as, as your, I'm sorry. Okay, these are very similar. 
except do it on carbon, you can do it the same thing on sulfur and sulfur dioxide. Mm -hmm. I'll leave it up to you as, as you practice, the ratio when it's given, and you can see if you did right. And also based on that, they ask you to calculate if you burn or burn like a volcano or something, burn sulfur, how much CO SO2 is released, or based on SO2, how much sulfur was burned. Very similar like we did before. Use these conversion factors. I, I can leave it to your as your own practice. In the last couple of minutes, okay, I want to very briefly talk about the calculation of a reaction. How the concept of mole will be used in a reaction. Okay, before we do that, I want to give you an example. Give you an example. Not a reaction, but like a home recipe or something of making pizza. Okay, for example, we know if I, I, I don't know if this is true or not. If I want to make one pizza, I need a, one crust, a five tomato sauce, and two cheese. This is, again, some ingredients I need for make a pizza. So kind of like a reaction, right? These are what we need to start with. These are my products. So these are kind of like reaction. Now, because this reaction is balanced, this is how we make it. So the quantity in front of each ingredient and also the quantity of the product, one, five, two, one, tells you something. That somebody is how these items are mathematically related. By what? By their coefficient. Okay, relating these mathematical quantities will help us to determine if I start with a different amount of something other than the coefficient, I can calculate the corresponding product. For example, if I say I have six cups of cheese, how many pizza do you think I can make if I have enough of these two? Then we use, again, the same, six cups of cheese as the given, right? Times what? One pizza need how many cheese? Two cheese. So one pizza what? Two cheese. Why I put cheese in the bottom? Because I'm what? That's what you Given cheese. So cheese, cheese canceled, six divided by two. I can make how many pizzas? Three pizzas. So you can see the same calculation can be applied to a, to a reaction. Okay, to a reaction. And we call this stoichiometry. Okay, stoichiometry. Again, in this class, we're not doing a comprehensive stoichiometric cost calculation, but I do want to show you by using this very simple reaction how stoichiometry works and how the quantity of a reaction works. Okay, this simple reaction is the one we have seen many times. Carbon react with oxygen to give what? CO2. This reaction is naturally balanced. One and one and one. Is that right? Now, before that, we study this reaction. We call this reaction is reacting like one carbon atom react with one molecule of oxygen give you one molecule of CO2. This is how we interpret it. But if you multiply, now we know what one mole is. If you multiply everybody by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, we know this is what? One mole. So we can also translate this coefficient one and one and one into this. One mole of carbon will react with one mole of oxygen to give you what? One mole of CO2. So now you know that the coefficient isn't really on the number of atoms or number of molecules. Why? Because there, one molecule, one atom doesn't tell us anything or doesn't do us anything. Most important for us is what? They're actually telling us what? The number of moles involved in a certain reaction. So if you see a coefficient, now you know that that coefficient tells you what? The number of moles in there. If you see a two here, means what? Two moles in there. If you see a three here, means what? Three moles in there. Why moles are important? Because mole is related to what? To mass. Is that right? Why we care mass? Because again, for any, any chemicals, any compound, what we can measure in the lab is what? Is mass. 
For example, one mole of carbon is how many grams? 12 grams. One mole of oxygen is how many grams? 32, because two oxygen is what? 32. One mole of CO2 is how many grams? 12 grams. Do you see that? That's why if you don't know one molecule, it doesn't do anything. I can still cannot tell nothing. But if I know the moles, then our world is totally different because they're really related to some numbers I can handle what? In real science research, science labs. I can measure 12 grams of carbon. Is that right? I can measure 12, 30, 30 grams of oxygen. I can, I can measure how much. So if I have any amount of grams, I can always convert to what? Two moles. Because these coefficients are related to what? Two moles by moles. And again, this is showing you why moles concept is very important because they relate not only molecules, atoms, but reactions. And also, by the way, you can see that this reaction balance to satisfy what? The law of conservation of mass. Right? 12 plus 32 is what? 144. Why? Because this reaction is what? Balanced. Mm -hmm. All right? So that's all for chapter 3. Again, the last half of the, the calculation needs a lot of practice. Okay, we have, we, our questions won't be difficult. We'll be very simple.